have a really good think, because somebody you know could earn you a lot of money for very little effort. Think, who do you know that wants to buy a property in Spain? A colleague, a mate, someone in your family, a friend of a friend? If you know someone, go to welcome-estates.com and click the Refer a Friend link. If they buy, you'll pocket a nice chunky thank you from one of Spain's leading estate agents. T's and C's apply. All details at welcome-estates.com. course welcome to part two with julian uh just waiting for julian to join shouldn't be too long the points raised in part one so here's julian now welcome to part two julian uh right let's go on to the main course connor ben Simon Jordan, Eddie Hearn, the right little uh, cast of characters in this little film, isn't there? What's your take on it, Julian, at the current state of play Thursday night? Quarter? Probably not. I'm probably not as close as everybody else. Um, you know, I want my views and they've been kind of well known on this channel. Um, but ultimately, it's a whole grubby affair. And I'm glad that Eubank Jr., is looking like he's going to fight Liam Smith. Whilst it's probably not a great fight to watch and not a great fight for um, Eubank Jr. because of what happened last time, it's, for me, it's it's the right move for him. But ultimately, what we're going to do now, what's Eddie going to do? Because we're, we're less than eight weeks away from June the 3rd. So it sounds like they're going to re, you know bring out the geriatric Manny Pacquiao. Um get him from a care home and put him in a ring in Saudi to fight uh, Conor Ben. Well, uh, if they go ahead with that fight with Conor Ben and, and he don't deal with these drug issues, if he don't deal with them, if, they, if he fights in America or whatever, Australia, Saudi, wherever he fights, China, wherever he goes, is it in bad taste, yes or no? Yes, it's in absolutely horrendous taste. And people keep saying Conor Ben has proved his innocence. People who say that are quite stupid, and I'll get some not great comments for that. He's been proven guilty twice or four times if you look at both. B samples. B samples. Test back, one and test two. Positive, yeah. aren't they, all of them? So four times he's been... Um, proven guilty. Now he has to prove his innocence. And all we kept hearing Eddie Hearn say was since December, when you see the science, the science is going to blow you into next week. The science is amazing. Well, we're waiting to see the science. Robert Smith um, is waiting to, to see the science. You kind of waiting to see the science. And the irony for me, what seems to get lost on most people is the only people to effectively clear Conor Ben is the WBC, and Conor Ben doesn't agree with their reason for clearing him. I mean, you couldn't actually make that up, could you? So um, is Con again? Is Con again? Hen? Conor Hen? Clomer Hen? What are you going to call him? Is is Conor Ben going to turn around and say, "I don't upset the WBC's ruling, so I don't upset your ranking, so I'm still banned," or is he going to say, "Go on then, I've been cleared by the WBC, even though." I don't agree at all that it was anything to do with eggs. I still maintain my position. There was nothing in my system and there's been contamination at the labs and I'm not moving from that point. And it's dirty, it's grubby. And I, I did feel there's a, there's a kind of swing in public opinion where people... Even the likes of the guard who continually say he's such a lovely young man, but you know he needs to clear his clear his name but ultimately i liked what the ring magazine have done recently people say the ring magazine have no clout now tell that to people who have the ring magazine championship belt outright but ultimately the ring magazine have said well we're not going to rank him there's too many questions around this and the only people who are going to clear this fight are the wbc and some bobber job commission who's going to give him half a licence, is going to fight in Saudi, is going to make a hell of a lot of money, 
And it looks like he's going to be fighting uh, a legend who is now going to be, like I say, he's going to be wheeled out with his Zimmer frame. And they can do what they want as far as I'm concerned because I won't be watching that. And you know my position on that. I won't be watching that. But the one thing I will say, and I continually say, it's a bit like when Pete, when Tommy Fury says, you know, my goal is to be a world champion, but I'm going down the YouTube route. So Conor Ben has continually said that his goal is to be world champion, a welterweight champion of the world. So he wants to be the welterweight champion of the world by fighting Chris Eubank Jr., who's a middleweight, by fighting Manny Pacquiao, who's retired and not ranked, and it's probably going to be around the 150 pounds, 154 pounds mark, or fighting who else was he throwing in the mix? Kel Brook, who couldn't make, couldn't make welterweight now anyway. So he wants to be the welterweight champion of the world, but his first comeback fight is not a ranked welterweight. That's going to force a mandatory. They're not fighting at welterweight either, will they? That's what I'm saying. So, so how? What are you actually trying well, to they, do? They were they were going to fight, but they didn't. But it weren't. Yeah. It's not going to be at welterweight if they do fight, is it? And how much money? So, what you're doing is you just fine. You're going to go down the money route. You're going to go down a a big name route. And for most boxing people, I think, I think what Eddie Hearn's really not is, I think it surprised him is that the backlash from the public, the backlash from boxing, from the boxing community. And ultimately, apart from that close-knit team in London and in Essex, there's nobody else supporting their stance. And, you know, Spencer Oliver continues to come out and give him some stick, as does everybody else. And it's a whole disgraceful sham, and it makes a mockery of clean sports. And if Conor Ben is clean... You just need to prove it. You just need to give us the 270 pages. But the WBC even found it was in your system. UCAD and the British Boxing Board of Control will find it's in your system. They'll apply strict liability and you will get banned. And the only reason you've not gone up in front of the Board of Control and UCAD is not because of some petulance that your father had a bit of a grudge with the Board of Control 30 years ago. The only reason you're not going up in front of them is because you know it's in your system, you know that's been proved unequivocally, and you're going to get a ban. The only reason you're going to get a ban based on strict liability. Yeah. yeah. That's why they've changed the tune, isn't it? That's why they've changed the tune, and you know what? It You just got to sometimes come up and say, look, it's in my system, I'm, I'm embarrassed, and I'm trying to find out how it got there, those trace amounts, etc. I know on it, but sometimes you get so deep in a lie, it becomes really impossible to tell the truth, doesn't it? Well, he's gone that far with it now. He's going to have egg on his face if he comes out and says, you know yeah. what, I did cheat. So he can't say that now. So He can't, he can't say that now, can he? And, and... Listen, I mean, he can't job in. All they can do now is hope for mercy, a two-year ban front board, yeah, like I'm here, Khan, and say, look, we don't know how it got in the system. We just want to move on with his career, and that's what they'll do. And the brass neck on them, they'll think they can get away with it. But the general public, they're not fooled. Mm. Aren't they? British yeah. are not like Americans. They don't probably no, 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 no. We, we don't we... have cheating, do we, over here? We don't, like we don't have cheating. We're all about fair play and, you know, the, the, the stiff upper lip. That's what we're about. What I will say about Amir Khan, and, I, and I've said this previously, just a quick one, Russell, is, Amir Khan's never going to box again. I think we all know that. So why, when you're presented with the evidence by, you know, UCAD, why would you turn around and to just say, listen, Khan says he's provided all his supplements and all his nutrition to UCAD, and they've clearly found that it's nothing in there. And then he said, well, it, it could have been my mate, could have given me a swig of his drink, it could have been a handshake. And it's when people come up with stuff like that it lacks credibility. So if I was Amir Khan, I wouldn't have accepted that two-year ban because Khan is a very wealthy young man, but there's more at stake than his wealth. What's at stake now is his reputation in British boxing. And he's, he, historically, he's been a really good world champion for us, really exciting for absolutely everybody. Now, if I was Amir Khan, personally, because we're not talking about you and I, who's doing a bit of, bit of dieting here and there, and you can't remember what you had last week and where you bought it from. We're talking about elite athletes who they know that window 
with Amir Khan. He had tests before, apparently. So they'll be able to narrow it down from a one to two weeks window when that got ingested into Khan's system. They'll have receipts and packaging, you know, all the package, everything else. They get they get sponsored by these supplement companies. They wear it all over their apparel. Amir Khan will be absolutely be able to pinpoint what is taken and when to at least say, listen, it was in my system, but here, this is the recovery drink that I've been having and this contains it, or this is the protein, or these are the amino acids I've been having, or et cetera, et cetera. Khan could unequivocally narrow that small window down and prove he unwittingly took this substance because, yeah, we know there wasn't enough in, in there for a, a greater performance or anything such as that, but it's not good enough, Russell. What Wouldn't you want to clear your name? Of course you would, yeah. You said, I'll tell you what, I'll take a two-year ban. Why? Why, why take a two don't take a two year ban on me? I said, listen, I, I'll show you what I what I eat and what I drink. I'll I can pinpoint down, you know, the, the one thing you learn, and I've done eight championship camps with Sykes where you gotta make the weight. The one thing you learn is you watch every single morsel that goes into a fighter's mouth and you know where it's from. So we were really strict. And we're just talking at British title level because we knew that Sykes would get drugs tested and you monitor everything, you check everything out. There's something called the internet. You check out the supplements, you look at the ingredients. You can knows what he takes and he knows what he's been eating. And you can't turn around and say, I don't know how it got in there. We're not talking about the last six months. We're talking about from the test where he said he was negative to the test where he's been positive. It's such a small window. It's five days or something on it. Five days, and you're telling me you can't pinpoint what's the cause of that adverse finding. Absolute nonsense. And when you turn around and say things like, he said to Simon Jordan on Talk Sport, I wasn't notified until September, October of last year, and UCAD said, we notified you in April, actually. And to have a five-month difference of opinion when you were notified and then to say, I might've got it by a handshake or it might've been something my mate gave me a swig of a drink. I don't know. We're talking elite athletes to turn around and say, I don't know. Can you imagine? Look how closely Kel Brook's dietary needs are met by Greg Marriott and the, the nutritionist. Oh, they sack them all, won't they? Kel and sack, sack them all. Every, Every, everything, the everything. They dot the I's, they cross the T's, they do this at so well, that's why right, they're there, they're, they're, Greg Marriott and all them. They're, they're obviously bright kids, aren't they? Like, very bright guys. Like very bright. Stick, aren't they? Because I always say, look, if they're that good, why are they not in football? Do you know what I mean? Why are they in they, boxing? They, they know about nutrition and they know about something. Yeah, of course they know the jobs, but I don't think your boxing's needed. I think he's just a trainer. Now we're going off key here, but I just yeah, think I agree. The trainer yeah. can do everything. But getting back to Amir Khan. Yeah, it's out. It's awful, really, how it's ended for him like that. It's spoilt it all, hasn't it? And I like him here, and I think he's been absolutely brilliant kid, in British he? boxing. Kid, he? I've met him a couple he'll of times. Be good to have here about that, you know. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be lovely lad. Look, if he's been not badly advised, you know, the one thing I'll say, and I'm not accusing Khan of, of cheating, I'm not. All right, I've, I've always liked him here. But the one thing I'll say is there's something about boxers. Later on in the career, I think of James Tony, um, Roy Jones. You know, a lot of boxers take banned substances often for injury. Holy field, holy field, or recovery because they just the bodies fall to pieces, and it's not always you know the necessary you know. And to, they don't know what's happening. They're like, what's going on here? Yeah, it's not really like to boost testosterone or. It, a lot of them take it for injuries, so that the, so it accelerates recovery from injuries. And I I think even though I put I have to say a bit of a cloud over Khan's career, and I always look at a fighter suspiciously who's had one failed test in a whole career. If I'm completely honest and say, do I think Amir Khan's a drugs cheat? I'd say no. And do I think Amir Khan's taken performance enhancing drugs throughout his career? I'd again say no. But if you ask me, do I think he potentially has taken something later on in his career to help him get through an injury or to possibly help him drop the weight? I'd say I think there's a there's a there's a chance of that, yeah. 
Well, I think he's a cheat, and he cheated in that last fight because he didn't want, didn't want to lose. It's in and his system, and that's it. He's gone guilty. He's been banned, so he's down as a drug cheat, isn't he? Like Dylan White. He, he's down as a drug cheat, and, and the, uh, the temptation in such a grudge fight, when you know your body's falling to bits, you know you you know you finished, you know you shot to bits. The temptation has got to be so great, honestly. It's I don't support it ever, but it's got to be so great. Where when when you're in a situation like that and you you no longer have your reflexes, you know these the fighters know that you know what do they say that the fighters the first one to know when he's not the same, but the last one to admit it. And Khan will have known. We saw Khan the last two or three years clearly on the slide, and then there was a couple of performances which were just not great at all. And then you drag your body through another gym and maybe someone said, this might help you a little bit. Maybe just try this. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a pain. It's, you'd be all right with it. And, and I'm not saying that's happened. I'm saying, I think, I think there's every chance that something like that's happened. And anybody in the comments who's saying such a tiny amount, look, there's always a tiny amount, isn't there? Unless it's uh big baby Miller and you know, it's, <laughs> You're up, you're up to here with every, sticking everything in your body. There's always a tiny amount. And when there's a tiny amount, you got to say, well, where does it come from? And, uh, as, you know, as this kind of, a, is it the end of the cycle or whatever? So I think there's a, it's unfortunate because I don't believe for me account to be a career drugs cheat. I think he's a, been a brilliant fighter, a brilliant ambassador for British boxing. But Unfortunately, he's tested positive and he's taken it on the chin and he's not battled it, he's not fought it. And that's why I'm you know that that's why I'm disappointed with that one because he hasn't support he hasn't fought, he hasn't tried to really say, no, no, I'm not accepting that two-year ban. Because if anybody can afford the best legal team, he can. Yeah. He's loaded, he's absolutely loaded, and rightly so as well. Yeah. Uh all right, then we're moving on from uh Jug issues. Uh, we'll move on to media. Right, what's going on with media? Bellew, Dazon, the Gad, Talk Sport. What, what's going on? Coogan not asking, but none of them are asking any questions. None of these have all, all got access. They've all filled the nappies, the lot of them, aren't they? Even Simon exactly. Jordan to a certain extent, he had them on up. Brick top and urn, and yep. didn't, didn't move in on them, did he? Simon I Jordan, I thought, was Simon cool. Jordan, I think, I think it's fantastic. I yeah. think he gives Brick top an easy run, and he gives Eddie what Eddie needs. He gets stuck into him, but I think he's getting other one an easy run. And he had Eddie on up as well, over twice. He's had him twice in last month, and never went Great. still. He didn't go in for the killer blows. He didn't ask the questions I would have asked. I would have, yeah. as you know, I'd always ask about Dr. Usman. That would be like a real pointed question. Where's the doctor? You know, um, we all want to know where the doctor is. I'd want to know about Ben's accelerated progression. Where's it come from? Where's this devastating KO power come from? What we've never seen before. Um, I'd I'd want to know, you know, the change. Hotels being paid for a fight week, going on Piers Morgan or whatever that ITV thing in the morning. They went on there in Calla, giving it the old yeah, yeah. fight week. They knew, they knew, mate, they knew. Nobody asked them any of that. None of them. Coogan and them are not going to ask us. They need access, don't they? Without access, they're just also runs like rest of us. And this is the thing is it's just. It's called. It's that word. It's, it's 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 integrity, and it's being honest with yourself. And I mean, Gareth A. Davis. We know what Gareth oh, A. Davis. God, is. What's happened to him and Colin Hart? Colin Hart, man. I mean, geez. what yeah. what are they all? Colin, Colin Hart is the biggest disappointment for me. There is. It's like I I love Colin Hart. I mean, I remember Colin Hart. He obviously I was a kid at the time. I was three, but. He predicted Ali would beat Foreman and then he predicted Ray Leonard would beat Marvin Agler and nobody else was predicting that. And Colin Hart used to just say it as it is. And now he's so far up um, Tyson Fury's... Great top. top. It, it's, it's humiliating, actually, to see these people um, groveling, as you always call it, with a begging bowl. Begging bowl. Like, like, wow, you, it's like you're, you're, you're a grown man, you. 
I used to look up to you. I looked, used to look up to you, and you're a grown man, and you're groveling for access. And wow, I mean, Did you see him going to town on Usex team, Colin Hart. Yeah, Colin Hart, you're a dinosaur. You need a Shackleton's high seat chair, mate. You need sitting in it and putting in front of Bay Window. Colin Hart was one of those people when he popped up on YouTube. I'm like, right, I'm listening to Colin Hart. Not I'm like, is he still alive, him? <sighs> Colin Hart, man, he defies medical. I know, he, he's, he looks like one of the uh, Madame Tussauds waxworks, doesn't he? He's just like, he look, yeah. It's, it's embarrassing. It, it, boxing's embarrassing right now. But what I will do is just a quick one, Russell. Every time I think... I know we're going off slightly, slightly off topic. Oh, but every no, time, no. every time I just think so fed up with boxing. I um this the one of these one of these forecasts might surprise you. I watched the uh, top rank show from the weekend on Sky, and I thought I'm going to watch this uh, Keyshawn Davis and the Jaron Anderson fights. Didn't know the result, and I watched them. And how refreshing it was to watch these two really good American prospects. So Jared Anderson, I've not really heard much because I, I've stopped following it in the detail. Like Kent will know these guys, and Rico and Terry, they know they'll know who these people are, but I don't really watch it as much as I used to. And I saw Jared Anderson against the other unbeaten kid. He looks really good, mate. I'm like America haven't had a great heavyweight for quite some time. Nobody's um, mentioning him all from over here, are they? I, I don't know if you saw him or not. First of all, seen him, I've got 14 and out. He's, I'm not seen a heavyweight with hands that quick for quite some time. His jab was on point. He got hit a few times and he, he, he just took him. But he switched to southpaw effortlessly. And I have not seen a heavyweight switch and be that precise. Oh, he's got it all on it. He's absolutely brilliant. So he, he blew me away and I thought, wow. I, I think in heavyweight division, heavyweight boxing's finished. And I know he might get knocked off at some point, but and this is going to sound ludicrous. Anybody watching this, say you talk absolute nonsense, right? If Jared Anderson were to fight Anthony Joshua... Knock him out, Cole. He'd beat him, mate. He'd, 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 he wouldn't know that. what... Joshua wouldn't know what to do with Jared Anderson because of the, the pinpoint precise shots he's got. And he's so oh, comfortable he's in the ring... Man. He doesn't. He's, he know, he reminds me of. Do you remember, David, do you remember when David A. burst on scene? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like a predator type, you know, a, 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 a killer. His his range and his in and out feet and his his screw shots. Some people say oh, he's he's only beating bums. I'm just no. to me, it doesn't matter who you're beating. Sometimes you look at a kid and you say that he can fight. He really can fight, and no one's mentioned him at heavyweight. And then I saw the um, the lightweight Keyshawn Davis. Wow. He's good, isn't he? <laughs> He's absolutely. So this is me. I get out of boxing. I get so peed off with it. And then I'm like, oh, I'm sick of it. And then I watch a couple of kids like that. And I'm like, I know Keyshawn Davis was a silver medalist in the Olympics. But I'm like, where have these two been hiding? And you know what was all equally refreshing as well, Russell? The fact that Anderson was fighting someone unbeaten. Yeah, he might have had a padded record. But the kid was unbeaten in 20 odd fights. And uh, Keyshawn Davis was having his eighth fight against a kid who was 26 2 and 1, who was a decent operator. Yidget was a decent operator. Why a top rank putting on these shows and putting these prospects in good, hard fights? And then you look at the, the dross that we have to watch, you know, we have to continually see our fighters fed at people with losing records. And I just thought, those two fighters are absolutely two fighters to watch out for. So I know I've gone on a, I've diverted there, but that, you know that Moses, who, who Frank Warren's got Moses at home. Yes, the time I yeah, yeah. And that Jared Anderson in ten years from now, they'll be the men. They're absolutely that the, they look so relaxed in the ring, and you see fighters switch, but not just switching for the sake of switching, but switching when's the right time to switch understanding how to switch, not just switch into a south That's Tyson form. Fury used to do as an amateur, just switch when he wanted. Just switch effortlessly, just switch. And I just thought, you know, there's there's people watching this to be just saying, you've got it in for AJ, I haven't got it in for AJ at all. Um, I haven't seen the whole fight, I've seen the highlights. I wasn't as harsh as some people um, with a Franklin win. But you, I saw a natural kid in Anderson who just thought, 
Joshua wouldn't know what to do with him. He wouldn't know how to approach him. Well, let me tell you this. Do you know Nathan Gorman's brother? Yeah. Uh, I've seen somebody sent me some a clip of him over there. I'll tell you what, he'd do Joshua now. <laughs> he'd I think there's, a few, he'd not there's a few people now. fancy there's a few people fancying the job right now, isn't there? Listen, and Nathan Gorman must be at home kicking himself, thinking if only I'd have got in shape and got fit, because he he, he could turn Joshua on his head any day of week if he were fit, couldn't he? Name it's one of them, isn't it? You, the, there's so many talented fighters out there. We'll just oh. go. And whatever you say about AJ, he applies himself. He's made the most of his ability. I am getting a bit bored. People saying he's still got L plates on. I mean, he's been a pro for th eleven years. I mean, how long's the guy gonna have L plates on? It's a, it's a bit ludicrous. But it's mongs, you know, utter mongs and goonies who come out with stuff like that from Essex. They talk rubbish, don't they? They talk absolute utter rubbish. But pony. Rhubarb this speak. Yeah. But no one's going to be calling out some of these young heavyweights, mate. And they'll be sure oh, he's not ready. He's too green. But no no one's going to be calling them out. And Bob Aram's not daft, is he? Stuck in his stable up. No, Aram's not daft at all. He's, he's, uh, been to Aram's. This, he's went to Aram's at Christmas, didn't he? Aram. Aram. But that's the thing with Bob Aram, isn't it? Is it? I remember saying to you before about... Yeah, just well um, tonight, will he? And I've also said to you before about, about Matchroom. I don't think the good talent spotters... It's not the hardest thing to get gold medalists and elite fighters and turn them into world champions, you know, because I think I said something like nine of the 14 Olympians who won gold in the last Olympics have become world champion in the Olympics before the last one. So that generally, it's a, not always, but often it's a recipe for success. But I don't think Hearn is a talent spotter. I think sometimes he just gets it wrong with, with fighters. But if I look at Bob Arum, and you look at the lineage and you look at the, the, the champions that, that Aram's had and, and the top ranked promotions and, and how they develop fighters. Even the Golden Boy did a really good job of developing fighters at the right time and moving at the right pace, but matching them quite hard, quite early. And the just top rank and Golden Boy seem, seem to be able to do that. Um, and Matchroom seemed to get fights to a certain level and then not know what to do with them. A little bit like Joshua Boatsy is like, I'm not sure what to do with him now. And and oh, they, they do know what to do with him. He's in position. He's got his ranking. He's mandatory for a world title. He don't do an interview and he don't do tickets and he's a boring SOB. That's how they him. look at it. That's why. Because if Dennis had him, he'd be like, I'm not bothered. He don't do tickets. Look at ranking he's got. I'll put money into him. If Dennis had Boatsy and Steve Crump, They'd be throwing thousands at him. They wouldn't be bothered that he didn't do tickets. They'd get to promised land, which is yeah. what they want. And then if they win a world title, they, that, they're, they're happy with that, aren't they? It ain't about dough for them, is it? No, it's not. But some people, it's just purely about the revenue, isn't it? About commercial success. But for other people, it's about training and developing and making... For Eddie Earn, it's money. But when, when did Eddie Earn ever get a Clinton Woods and take him to a world title? Never look, exactly. Look at that. Dennis did thousands in, but they got there, didn't they? Yeah, and they can't talent spot. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're not talent spotters, mate. Um, I look at it like this, right? Here's one for you a Coley world champion, Boatsy, Olympic uh, bronze, and WBA mandatory. Yeah, so that Eddie's put all that money into him for seven years, got him in position. And done the same with Coley and got him to promise land, British, Commonwealth, European and world. He's been a few world champion a few years of Coley. Just let some go. Why? Because they don't do views on IFL. Because they don't do numbers, but we know that Conor Ben's going to do views against... Um, and he ain't won a belt. He ain't, he ain't won nothing at domestic level, has he? He ain't done anything he at domestic level. He's the, he's the biggest hype job in boxing, mate. I said, I said it all along. He's the biggest hype job in boxing, but it's called Ben... He's got an arrogance about him, what some people find attractive, and he's, he does views. And this is what I'm saying. I mean, bo boxing's always been, to some extent, a popularity contest, but you've always had to back it up at some point with, with you know, with your, your victories and your performances, but not if your name's Conor Ben. You know what I mean? It's bad, isn't it, for the sport, isn't it? But what do you think? Can I ask you a question, Russell? Yeah, go on, ask um, I know this is your, your show, so... Just so I'm kind of smiling about. So you know, lad, you we know. couldn't we couldn't make Anthony Joshua and Wilder the fight that we wanted, right? No. We couldn't make 
Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, the fight that boxing wanted, not a good fight, the fight that boxing wanted. And we couldn't make Tyson Fury against Usyk the fight that boxing wanted and the fight that boxing needed. And now the powers that be are spinning a narrative. So what do you think the odds are that all of a sudden we're going to get these two semifinals and this final with Fury, Usyk, Joshua and Wilder and they're all going to get this Saudi money? Not a chance. Get... Not a I just wonder if you thought it'd happen or not. Well, there were enough money on the table last time, wasn't there, for them to do it. So if they couldn't do it, then why, why all of a sudden are they saying they're going to do it all? And then you've got these... What narrative are they trying to spin now to keep everybody on? Do we actually believe this nonsense from this... Sh if you lined them all up against the wall and said, which one's telling the truth, who would it be? Eddie, Frank, Bob Adam, <laughs> Al Heyman will be involved. Wilder Furies, Big John will be involved as well. Pop, pop, bang, MI5 watching in front moon. All that lot lined up. Dazone, all them officials, them Saudi lot who throw people off buildings, cut arms off for nicking a bit of fish. Right? Are you telling me any of them lot would be believable? Or Derek Chisora saying some big happening, bruv, bruv. Bro. I wouldn't trust any of them with a clockwork. of all cobblers. I wouldn't trust any of them with a clockwork train set, mate. None of them. The, not none of them, because we can't make the one fight that matters at heavyweight, and all of a sudden we're going to make three back to back. Now he's going missing till December. Big Meach. Do me a favor. Yeah, I mean, my my theory on that one is the zone of cut the budgets. AJ doesn't fight for peanuts. He's no longer the massive commercial draw that he, he used to be. They haven't got the subscriptions, what they expected to get for that one month. And it probably hasn't, they took a long time to sell the arena out. And then he's gone there, there and he's had an opportunity to shine. And he's not put on a great performance. So I, I think DeZone might have turned around and said, you know what, we can't afford to pay this guy three, four times a year because not generating the cash. So you're yeah. gonna have to you're gonna have to cash him out in a massive fight. Hey, all all they need to do now, Brick Top, Bob Aram and Eamon, they just have to get Canelo away from Eddie, and all House of Cards will come crashing down, won't it? All collapsed on it, mate. Um, all, on, all on his thatch. But don't worry, Conor Ben's gonna knock out Manny Pacquiao, so all will be forgiven. Uh, Eddie will have to go to Morris for a new wig. <laughs> yeah, but at least at more is to test it against Hurricane Wind. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Eddie. Oh. Evening, Eddie. Is he still six or no? Has he moved to seven or recently? Has anybody else come out of the closet? Who is oh, not? He in? might beat their last in court, though, at divorce, so he could go to seven <laughs> now. He's got a lot on his plate, though, which is good for everything. Yeah. Go on, Chloe. <laughs> I think Sky Nicholson might not tap him into submission, don't you? We're oh, only I'm only jealous, Eddie. Old Sky Nicholson coming over to New York to be a pundit and that. <laughs> what about when Eddie's missus turned up at one of the shows in America? <laughs> that just to keep tabs on Eddie. That burst his bubble that weekend. Uh, well, he goes to Australia. Oh, Eddie. You imagine, imagine that. Yeah? I'm off to Australia to watch a six-round undercard fight. It's a Lord Fantoroy has to top everybody. He just can't have a bit on the side from next village, can he? You know what he has to do? He has to fly him in from the other end of the world, do he? <laughs> everybody, doesn't he? But, you know, joking aside, I am actually jealous, Eddie, to be fair. Um, yeah. Although I think he might be a bit too old for it, but no. I don't know. He should have been loyal to his missus, should he, really? I mean, yeah. two kids to him. She sat at home all day with that Range Rover and swimming pool, waiting for Eddie. Never enough money, never never enough power, never enough money. Never when he went on IFL saying, well, I've been out of the country 300 days last year, and well, what, what had his missus doing while all that were going on? She must have been at home playing Scrabble. Yeah. So it's, uh, you pay the price, don't you, to uh, marry a massively successful workaholic. In an ideal world, she'd have been at home, wouldn't she, uh, playing Connect Four with O'Hara Davis? <laughs> <laughs> That would have been karma, wouldn't it, for a little Edward? Oh, hey, I've been down there and nailing her. I've, I've no, I'm no angel in my own private life. I've always been the, the most amazing, but 
yeah you it's one of those and you put yourself out there and you and you're very you're very obvious with certain things and there's always a camera there that you, you're famous and everybody knows you so you've got to be careful what you're doing allegedly you don't even have to be famous. I used to have people telling me you and me MOT would join that black mark I had. <laughs> well, oh well, yeah, your followers will do all your these people. Well, the, tro that. the trolls will tell you when your MOT is due, mate. The way I went, is it? Jeffy, hell, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> A nice one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it failed last year on discs. <laughs> Someone's been oh, Googling your car, mate. I don't know what can you do. Unbelievable. Uh, Usyk, what we're going to do with about Usyk? This is how I look at it: European champion, amateur, world champion, amateur, Olympic champion, amateur. Uh, heavyweight, by the way, not super heavyweight. Same year Joshua won his. Then he's cleaned up at cruiserweight. All world title fights away from home, you know, all around the world, cleaned up, undisputed. He's now unified. At heavyweight, he's done Joshua twice. Uh, yeah. He's got five of the belts, WBA, IBO, IBF, WBO, and what's all the ring magazine. Ring magazine. So he's got five of the six belts, but yeah, he's got to take 30% and then 15 rematch. What, 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 so he gets 80% if he fucking wins two fights. Well, it, it's one of those, isn't it? it it's it's that classic example of when somebody says, I want 500 million, which he initially, that's what Fury said when he was retired, didn't he? I want 500 million for Uzi. Sometimes people give you a number and that number tells you they don't want the fight. It's just as, it's as black and white as that. You know, I, I want to fight Anthony Joshua next to me. You know, I'll make a comeback. Um, but I'm only going to do it for like 3 billion it's just ridiculous, isn't it? So people give you a number because it just means I don't want the fight. But, you know, you're only a middleweight. And I've, I've gone on record, I think Fury beats him, but you're, you're only a middleweight. I'll swat you like a fly, but it's still it's still not enough for me. Well, it's it, about... it tells you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. And, and, I, and I hate to say it, I told you so. I said, didn't I? That fight won't happen. Well... He's got to, if he don't fight Joshua next, Fury, if he don't fight Joyce, he's already fought well. That where's he go? I mean, how, how could they sell Tyson now if he don't fight? Well, Big John's him? already said, hasn't he, that Joe Joyce ain't, ain't a worthy contender. Um, well, if Joe Joyce isn't a wor worthy of fighting Fury, then who is outside of Oops? It was is this where we're at now? Uh, is he so elite with his three title defenses in seven years? Is he that elite and that indestructible that nobody, including people like Joe Joyce, unbeaten silver medalist, big puncher, he's not worthy. You you you're not you're not worthy. But Derek Chisora is worthy. Derek Chisora, Jesus. I mean that was a, that that was absolutely scandalous, wasn't it? I didn't object they, to the fight as long as we got the Usyk fight. But if we, they pull we, it off again, if they pull it off again, they'll end, I think they'll end themselves myself. I think I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they're on about uh, John Ruiz, but I wouldn't be half surprised if he did actually end up fighting that, what's he called? Uh, Send your number link, Julian. Yeah, do it, mate. Two seconds. We're going to part three, boys and girls. All right, buddy. Porky's Corner is proud to be sponsored by Spartan Sight Solutions. They are specialists in civil engineering and demolition contracts for the construction industry. Interested parties should visit their website or contact Porky's Corner for a referral at porkycorner at mail.com.